Maybe you saw it first with Steve on your sides reporting, but plastics literally are everywhere in our lives. They even get into the food that we eat every day. Yeah, a new report is talking about the impact on your health. So we brought in our ninth health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, to talk about this. Um, microplastics is part of this. What do they do and, and how, how do they get in our bodies? <laughs> microplastics and nanoplastics, teeny tiny plastics. And what they are are breakdown products of the plastics that we use in our everyday life. Plastic bottles, plastic bag, cosmetic products, medical devices, all of the things that we have in our life that have plastics in it. We actually think we're getting increased exposure to these over time because of the climate change. We're breaking down more plastics into these contaminants and these tiny little particles we can inhale them, we can ingest them, and they can even get in through our skin. Hey. So, so they, they get in there, what do they do? If they're not breaking down outside, are they not breaking down inside either once they're in our body? That's exactly right, because our body doesn't know how to break these down. So we have cells called macrophages that go and try to gobble these up as a way to sort of break them down and get rid of them. When they can't get rid of them, they end up in our tissues. In fact, what we're seeing is the smaller the particles, the more likely they are to end up in our organs. And we've seen As them opposed to us passing them somehow, like if, by, by if you inhale or ingest it. Oh, exactly, you're not gonna pass it in your stool. It'll go in your bloodstream, and then the organs that get the most blood, like the heart, the liver, the kidneys, the human placenta, breast milk, we're, we're seeing plastics in all of these organs. Where do they go first? So they, you don't, it's hard to say, like which organ they choose? Or? It sort of depends a little bit on how they get into your body. So if you inhale them, they get directly into the bloodstream. Obviously, if you ingest them, they go in through the gut, so they could go to your liver or some of the organs that are your digestive organs. So I see the big problem is clogging. It yeah. is creating clogs and jams, and, and we become less efficient. All of our organs become less efficient. Is there a further danger or is that it? Uh, well, we're just discovering the science around the plastics. We know that in animal models, having plastics causes inflammation. Having plastics causes disease. And now we're getting some demonstration, and this was a very interesting study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which was kind of groundbreaking, that these plastics can end up in our plaques, in our lesions, in the cholesterol deposits that we have in our arteries. So they took a number of people from Italy, and they were having a rotor rooter of the artery in their neck, and they looked at it under the microscope, they saw tiny little pieces of plastic stuck in the artery, more than half the people causing inflammation. And the people that had plastic in their arteries versus the ones that didn't had a higher risk of heart attack, stroke, and heart disease. Well, and when you talk about climate change, of course that makes a connection too, but what can we do then is just like glass and use glass or something all the time, never use a, what, what should we be doing? I would say don't panic is the first because they're ubiquitous, they're everywhere. So we really can't avoid getting some exposure to plastic. So there's no need to sort of panic and worry about it. But I do think as a medical profession, as a medical community, we need to put in more research into figuring out how to think about some of these plastics. And the FDA, I would say, needs to do a little better job of trying to raise awareness around these plastics, yeah, especially. They don't really talk There's about nothing. That. nothing. And we don't think about it. Like I drink water out of a water bottle that's plastic almost every day when I'm at work and we don't think about our exposure. I did a non-scientific study and found that 68% of the stories you tell us are terrifying. <laughs> So my goal here is to terrify you into submission, and then I can get you to have a healthy life. <laughs> we said that about you last week one day. I said, Dr. Coley would say, we can't do that. I don't know what it was. Plastics aren't going anywhere. We can mitigate to some extent. But as you say, I mean, it's in the air. It's, it's everywhere. You That's can't right. filter your life entirely. You can't. And I don't want us to panic, but I do want us, especially if we have a history of heart disease or other types of risk factors, chronic illness, we're older, to be extra careful. I want us to be, be on guard. Yes. And I want us to think about everything we put inside our body, where it's coming from, what it's touched. And that includes things we put on our skin. And cosmetics are a huge thing that has come up, especially in our adolescent population lately. I'm one of those old guys used to drink out of the hose, you know. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is tough. And now you've gone to the Stanley Cup. <laughs> <Look> <laughs> Had a sip out of the Stanley Cup, too. Yeah, you did. You but did. We not, that. not that one. Not the real that one. one. It's yeah. the other one. I'll yeah. just leave you with one thing. We haven't established causality yet. Okay. So even though we found that the people with plastic in the plaques had more, more heart attacks and strokes, we don't know if it's just a marker of bad drinking water or something else. So okay. we still need research, and I want us to just be more aware and alert. We're probably going to hear more about it, but thanks, as always, for sharing your knowledge with us. Thanks, Dr. Pyle Coley. And you can always find more from Dr. Coley at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley.